Yo, what's going on guys? It's DJ Rick Webb. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the lighting series. The first ever lighting series on the channel. This is going to be the first edition of lighting specific related videos. As you can see behind me, I have transformed the garage into a really cool, basically, place to play around with lighting and show off the capabilities of lighting in this video series. Right now, I have three videos planned. This is going to be video number one, and specifically in this video, we're going to be talking about the different types of lights that we use as mobile DJs. And we're going to dive a little bit into how we use those lights and different do's and don'ts and designs, basically, we create with these types of lights. Then I'm going to be doing a second video that's going to be a very basic walkthrough of like DMXing, how DMX works, how you can control your lights via DMX. And then in a third video, I'm going to specifically dive into how I program all of my lights using Shave Show Express, which in my opinion is the easiest way to program any sort of lighting rig you may have. Way easier than the ADJ Airstream DMX bridge or whatever that thing is. I have one of them. It's sitting over here. Maybe we'll make another video on the Airstream DMX bridge to show you guys how much harder it is to use it compared to show express but for now you're gonna have to take my word on it so let's jump into this video on lighting and i'm pretty much calling this lighting 101 for mobile djs So the first thing I want to talk about is the different types of lighting out there. I'm going to be showing you guys examples on the screen as well and showing you what kind of lighting I have behind me. The first type of lighting is spot lighting and we have a couple spots here I can show you guys. We got a couple ADJ InnoSpot Pros back here. Those are spot lights. You also have wash style lighting which I have a bunch of PARs already set up and I can click this button right here and show you guys wash lighting it provides a wash a third type of lighting would be your beam fixtures and i'm going to throw some pictures up and some video clips of beam lighting it creates beams and then the fourth type of lighting elements that are out there are centerpiece fixtures and this would be your lasers your derbies your star balls your mirror balls and this like U ufo thing that you guys see on the screen now we could talk about like a fifth type of lighting and that would be video elements but we're mobile djs and for the most part most of us if we are using video we're just using a couple tv screens on like some totems or something like that most of us are aren't using video walls or getting very fancy with video elements. Maybe we'll dive into that in a separate video, but for this video, we're not going to be focusing on video elements because most of us are not using them for lighting purposes. We're just using them to display content. So yeah, those are the main four categories of lighting out there. Wash, spot, beams, and center fixtures. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into lighting and lighting design. So in terms of lighting and lighting design, it is what it says. We're using lighting to create design designs, features, looks, themes. That is the main purpose of lighting. First off, I want to talk about using lighting in your mobile DJ setup because that's what pretty much 100% of us do is use lighting as part of our actual setup like the one behind me, the makeshift one behind me. The main point I want to get across in terms of your lighting setup and your mobile DJ setup is that lighting is most important in terms of what it looks like to the client, not what it looks like to you behind the booth. And in terms of the four different types of lighting that I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm going to go into a lot of the do's and don'ts because certain ways that you use lights in your mobile DJ setup can look not as good as what they possibly could if you understand what I mean. I'm going to be showing you guys examples and pictures so let's dive on into it and start with wash lighting. In terms of all four types of lighting, wash lighting is by far the most versatile and the most user friendly type of lighting out there. There's all kinds of wash fixtures out there. You got stuff like the wash effects too which I'm using to get me some uh, light here so that you guys can see my face. You got cob cannons and by far you got the most versatile of all wash lights and that is the pars like you got behind me. They're also the most affordable which is why I'm going to spend a lot of extra time talking about pars and how you use pars. Wash lighting can be used for indirect wash, direct wash, crowd blinders, totem lights, facade lights. What else do I got? Up lighting, forgot about that one. And beyond that there are endless ways to mount wash lighting like below we got below speakers above speakers you can do them on the floor shining up the walls you can do them on the floor shining across the floor you can light up columns you can do 
all sorts of stuff with wash lighting. It is super versatile. And I've already said this, but PARs are especially useful because you can use them for all of those purposes. Indirect, direct, crowd lighters, all that sort of stuff. That is why it is by far the number one recommended first light for beginners in terms of what I recommend. I've, I know Bar also recommends it. Don't put that in the video. PARs are super versatile. So now I'm gonna jump behind the camera and show you a little bit of how wash lighting works. So ignore the two movers. I'm just using it so you guys can actually see the setup but I set up four pars here and I set them up in different areas on purpose so I got two above the speakers that are aimed upwards hitting the ceiling and I got two mounted below the speakers pointing out and this is because I see a lot of DJs online using their par lights and just mounting them up O clamps right below the speakers I am a super negative fan of doing this I'm a big fan of doing what I have above lighting up the ceiling and not directly washing your crowd. So let me shift the movers off and show you what I mean. Let me turn on the bottom two pars to show you what normally clients see. This is what they see. They see a direct glare and bright lights shining right at them. Now, this looks really cool behind the DJ booth because you can clearly see all of the people and it's lighting up all the people and it looks really good from behind the DJ booth. But in front of the DJ booth, it is very blinding. If we go to live, you can really see right here how these lights are very bright and it's kind of like looking at headlights. Depending on how bright your lights are, it's very blinding to look at. Not to mention, if they're below your speakers and there's people dancing in front, the first people there are gonna get hit by the light and then the light's gonna die. That is why I'm a bigger fan of doing this. So right here, it, again, is the bottom lights, but if we turn on the top lights instead, as you can see, there is no glare. You can look directly at the setup, you can look around, you can look in this direction, and not be blinded. And yet, we still have light on the dance floor. This is the difference in direct lighting and indirect lighting. Another way you can achieve indirect lighting is if you did up lighting around the room, you will achieve the same effect with indirect lighting. As you guys know, I normally use the Wash FX 2s because they're a lot brighter than say two pars, and I can light up a lot more of that dance floor and get a wider coverage with my wash. Before that, I was just using four of these exact same pars on a T-bar mounted behind my DJ booth and those lights themselves were also turned up hitting the ceiling. Now I quickly want to touch on one subject and that is outdoor events where you don't have a ceiling or walls to do indirect lighting. The best thing you can do in that scenario is to get your lights very very high as high as you can get so like the 12 foot T-bars and then you can use that lighting to shine down on the crowd so that way again it's not blinding unless they actually look up at the light so they can actually look around and it won't blind them. So that would be my solution for doing outdoor events and you guys have actually seen me do it. I'll put a clip up right now of where I've done indirect lighting. So that's a little bit on wash lighting and before I, I leave the topic of wash lighting in terms of your setup Again, it is the most easy thing to do and it's very cheap to do I mean you could just buy two wash FX 2s and you have lighting for the whole entire dance floor You could pretty much get away with the one two or four pars as well and have perfect good indirect lighting That looks great for your DJ setup and do it very cost efficiently So now let's move on to beams and spots I'm combining these into the same thing because they're both moving heads and the first thing I want to talk about in terms of of beams and spots is using atmosphere, using haze and fog with your beams and spots. Beam lighting is an absolute pretty much no-go if you don't have haze or atmosphere. As you guys can see on the screen right now with this video, this is a, an event I actually did. I was not in charge of the lighting at this event. I was more or less just there to DJ. It was for the company I work for in Ohio. We use beams there in the middle and as you can see, it's just projecting a little tiny dot all around the room and it's not really achieving what beams should look like like this clip right here from SLM Entertainment, credit to them, of where they use beams and it looks very sick because they're using atmosphere, they're using haze where you can actually see the beams going through the air. Now, in terms of spots, it's kind of like a half go, half not because spots do have a wider coverage field. They don't look as bad without haze, but again, there's a clear night and day difference when you use haze with spots. And I'm gonna show you guys a demonstration here in the garage with the spots I have up there to show you guys the clear difference. It is night and day when you use haze and atmosphere when you're using spots. Now again, with moving heads, beams, and spots, there are a lot of different configurations and stuff you can do with your mobile DJ setup with these things. There's lots of different endless mounting positions. You can mount them on top of speakers. You can mount them on top of totems. You can put two of them on top of totems and mount them upside down like the clip 
I'm showing right now. You can mount them on a giant truck structure. You can mount them on top of T-bars. There are a lot of combinations and a lot of different unique looks you can create with the variety of setups that you can do with these fixtures. Now, just like what we talked about with the pars and the wash, there is one thing you kind of want to consider when you're doing spots and when you're doing beam, and that is you don't want to have concentrated light on your crowd shining on them like car lights for a long duration of time. And in terms of beams and spots, they're a lot more focused and a lot more powerful than your wash pars. And it actually is very, very blinding if you look directly at those fixtures. That's why we wanna keep beams and spots moving around the room. It's okay to hit the crowd occasionally, you just don't want it to stay focused on them for a long duration of time. Similar to the patterns you see behind me, the lights are moving around the room, occasionally coming and hitting where the camera is at. You want them to keep moving around the room. Now there is an exception for focusing light in on the dance floor, and that is for like the first dance for the bride and groom. And that is because it looks really sick in pictures and the guests are all looking at them, so they're not on the dance floor and it looks really cool to them as well. Again, especially if you're using haze and fog, it looks even better. So now I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of an example of what haze and fog does for spot fixtures like the ADJ in the spot pros that I got behind me. So right here I have the fixtures on white. They're doing different random combinations. They're moving around the room. They're doing figure eights. And this is what spot lighting looks like without any haze. Again, it doesn't look that bad. It looks kind of cool, but as I turn on haze here in a second, you're going to see a direct stream impact on what the difference is with and without haze. For reference, I am using an ADJ haze generator. This is an oil-based haze. It is the same haze generator that you guys see me use in all of my events when I'm using these spots. And as you guys can see right now, the haze are just turned on and we're already starting to see a little bit of the beam fixtures. The beauty of haze is it's a lot lighter than fog, so it looks a lot cleaner with using movers and it's not big clouds of smoke in your face. So once this builds up, I will show you guys what the finished product looked like. All right guys, so the haze has been running now for literally less than a minute. And this is what spot movers look like in haze. As you can see, it is a night and day difference, guys. Right here, I just added a tri-prism, which splits the beam into three different beams. Kind of makes it a wider spot and a little bit cooler of a beam effect, as you guys will see here in a second. And that right there, guys, is why it is a million times better if you use haze or fog when you're using spot movers. As you guys saw when there was no haze, it was not much of an effect, but once you add haze with spot movers, it looks absolutely amazing. And with beam fixtures, like I said, without haze, beams looks absolutely stupid. So don't even use beams unless you have haze. And now you guys can kind of see the effect of also layering in some indirect wash lighting with the pars above with the movers themselves. It really adds that little bit of extra pow. You now have wash lighting, washing the dance floor at all times, and then you have movers. Now layering lights like this and doing stuff where you also shut off the pars and just doing dramatic beams and stuff like that. This is a lot of stuff we'll talk about in terms of programming your lights to music and how I actually will use my DMX programming to create a mood and stuff with the music. That's something that we'll get into when we get into video three, when we talk about how I DMX lights and all that. I do wanna add one note real quick and that is a lot of you guys are probably gonna comment about you cannot use haze or fog. I will get into that in a separate video. I have had no problem using haze at all of my events. Uh, there's some methods to how you get around the you can't use fog here with certain hazers. But that guys is wash, spot, and beam, the main three types of lighting that are out there that we use as mobile DJs. Now that fourth type of lighting that I mentioned is centerpiece fixtures, and centerpiece fixtures are more or less not used by most mobile DJs out there. Most of us are not using centerpiece fixtures at weddings. School dances is a different scenario. A lot of us are using them in, in school dance scenarios. But the main point of a centerpiece fixture is to be very eye-catching and to really fit the theme that they are going for for that wedding or for that school dance. Like a derby can create sort of like a retro 70s feel. A mirror ball can also do this. A mirror ball can also create a lot of like star app atmospheres, mirror balls can set moods in terms of like slow dances, big boy lasers can definitely create a club style atmosphere projecting stuff across the ceiling. It could also be like a Star Wars theme. Centerpiece fixtures are 
theme lights in my opinion. That's what their main purpose is and their main point is to be a very eye-catching fixture and normally it needs to fit the theme of that event. So that was a discussion of lighting on your mobile DJ setup itself. Now I want to talk a little bit about using lighting in rooms to create designs and unique themes and stuff like that. Just some concepts and ideas that I want to bring about to you guys in terms of looking to do like up lighting and spots and stuff inside a room. And specifically there are some key concepts I want to talk about in terms of up lighting and doing lighting in a room. Similar to what we were talking about in terms of a centerpiece fixture fitting the theme of the event. If you are doing lighting in a room, if you're getting to the point where you're doing lighting, the main reason for doing that is to match the theme and to create a unique look that that client wants for that room that fits their theme, you see where I'm going with this. And by far the biggest type of lighting that we use to create these themes in a room is wash lighting. There's some key concepts and features I want you to think about when you're doing up lighting in terms of a room. Your goal is to highlight and to enhance the room to make the room pop and to not only do that but also match the theme of their event. So some key things to think about are low ceilings and high ceilings. If you have high ceilings, you can use stuff like the Wash FX2s to wash the ceiling and create a very unique look and you can actually shut off a lot of the house lighting and maybe just leave chandeliers on and use that wash lighting to fill in with maybe like blues or pinks or greens to create a theme. You also have the king of all lighting in terms of room and that is a Lighting. And one thing you want to consider with up lighting is the textures, if there's columns, if there's brick, the different unique features in that room. Those are things that you want to use up lighting to highlight so that way you make the room pop. Say they have a brick fireplace in the room that you are DJing at. If you put a couple up lights on that brick, the texture of that brick is going to pop so much more than if you just put the lights on the wall surrounding the brick fireplace, making that fireplace stand out because that is a unique feature in the room. Similar if there are columns in the room, putting up lighting on the columns is going to highlight that unique feature in the room compared to just putting the lights around the room, again just shooting up the walls, creating random beams of lights up wall. Now we've all been in the very blank bare room. This doesn't apply just to bare rooms, you could also do this with a lot of very unique rooms, but there's this thing called adding textures and patterns to walls. I'm going to put some pictures up on the screen right now of some usages for doing textures and a lot of times what you're looking at in these photos is we used wash lighting of some sort to wash the walls and then we layered a texture over top of it using either a gobo or a monogram projector with say leaves like you've seen in some of these basically adding that additional effect and also creating that theme again. Again, lighting is all about theme. And if you can sell themes, you're gonna do amazing in lighting. Next time you're doing up lighting, maybe this weekend, and you go to just plop 12 up lights around the room and match them to the wedding color of the wedding party or the tables or whatever, really look around the room. Look at some of the key features and see if you can get a little bit creative with your lighting and really make that room pop and really make that room stand out. It'll really separate you in terms of your lighting design capabilities from your competitors in your market. So to wrap it up, this was the first video in terms of lighting. This was just a lighting 101 for you guys talking about the different types of lighting that are out there. Spots, wash, beams, centerpiece fixtures, all these different sorts of lights that we have in our toolbox as DJs and as lighting designers. And we talked a little bit about some do's and don'ts in terms of your setup and how you utilize your lights so that your lighting looks really cool and really sick to the clients and it doesn't look like they're staring at a bunch of headlights that are just changing colors. And beyond that I touched a little bit on lighting design in terms of the room. A lot of these concepts that I'm talking about guys, especially lighting design in rooms, I can make two or three more videos on. Uh, to explain the different sorts of things that you could do with lighting projectors and just the different sorts of tools that are available and the different sorts of themes that you can create. It is endless possibilities out there. So with that said, this video is uh, proudly sponsored by all of the awesome people on the Patreon. So here is a scrolling list of all of the current Patreon contributors. If you guys would like to help support the channel and help support the content that I am making for the channel, feel free to click the link down below and join the Patreon. Uh, it really helps guys, especially for videos like this where I have to go through and set up all of this stuff. Not to mention I have a full-time editor that edits these videos. That's Joe. Joe was popping. 
YouTube doesn't pay much. We get demonetized on just about every gig log nowadays, so it really helps when you guys help support the channel through sources like that. Along with that, I did mention some other videos I possibly could be making in terms of lighting, so if you guys have any suggestions for different lighting sorts of videos, stuff you want me to dive into, be sure to leave them down in the comments section down below, as well as leave a big like on this video if you like the lighting series and you like where we're going with this. Again, the next video we're going to be talking strictly DMX and how you DMX lights. And then the following video from that I'm going to talk about Show Express specifically and how I use Show Express to program my lights and do my light shows at my events. And lastly, if you're not already subscribed to this YouTube channel, be sure to click that subscribe button. And with that said, guys, my name is DJ Rick Webb. Keep them records spinning, guys. And I will see you guys next time with another lighting video, gig log, or probably from uh, DJ Expo because I'm going to be at DJ Expo all next week and I'm not sure when this video hits the upload uh, but it probably will be sometime right before we go to DJ Expo or during DJ Expo so be on the lookout for the DJ Expo videos and um, peace out guys peace